So here we go. Okay. Beautiful. There we go. Okay. So today I'm here with James Bailey, the co-founder of Bailey Lodges. James, just wanted to start off with um, a bit of your background. So you and Hayley had set up Bailey Lodges back in 2003. Just wanted to know what were what was what were you and Haley up to um, pre two thousand and three? Pre wow. Bailey well, Lodges. first of all, thanks for uh, thanks for having me along, and uh, I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, pre two thousand and three. Well, two thousand and three was a um, an interesting time for us because that's when we uh, basically bought the land on Lord Howe, bought the existing property on Lord Howe Island that that ultimately became uh, Capella Lodge, which was our first lodge. Pre-2003, we'd both uh, had uh, quite um, uh, different experiences or careers that, that converged. And in many ways, those two careers are what sort of formed the basis of the, I think, the, the, special, the special ingredients that ultimately became Bailey Lodges. But I'd spent uh, the previous uh, 15 years or so um, working for P&O Australian Resorts, and we'd had the likes of... Um, Heron Island, Cradle Mountain Lodge and Silky Oaks Lodge. And then we also purchased all of what were the Qantas resorts. So Lizard Island, Badara Island, Dunk, et cetera. And really turned those into an amazing um, yeah. portfolio. And, and in many ways, something like Heron Island was perhaps the pioneer of experiential tourism in Australia long before we even sort of even knew what that was. Um, and anyway, as fate, as fate would have it, um, we did so well with those properties that P&O decided to sell them and the rest is history. They were then sold to Voyages and in many cases, they've been sold on many times since. So I left the business in uh, 2002. And uh, at the same time, I'd met Haley back in, well, actually I'd met Haley at the Heron Island Dive Festival in the mid nineties, I think. Oh, uh, no way. Like perhaps, uh, perhaps 97, <laughs> something like that. Was she your instructor? No, no, no. <laughs> guest. I was running the dive festival and uh, she was uh, along as a guest. So I had met her, but uh, quite a few years later, um, we uh, met again and, uh, and I think that was in 99. And uh, the rest is sort of history that um, she'd spent um, a decade as well doing very different things. And her life was um, working on expedition cruise ships um quite a many of the years for Lindblad in all the different parts oh, wow. of the world okay. so she um comes from a family that is very focused on travel and exploration um and uh Hayley has that that passion for for experiential travel I possibly more had the travel for boutique luxury um and combo. we've yeah we've combined that in fact an interesting story is when we first um were spruiking, I think probably the best word, Southern Ocean Lodge, uh, which subsequently became our flagship property, uh, to actually the US travel trade, people would look at it and say, oh, okay, so what are you guys? You know, what, what is your business? And trying to explain us, I said, well, if you think of us as a cross between an Amman resort yeah. and a Lindblad, Lindblad expedition cruise, you've sort of got that combination. And that was an interesting way, especially to explain it to our US colleagues, yeah. into because they were both products that they could understand and position market positionings and experiences that they could understand. Um, but that combination really wasn't there wasn't it wasn't really defined at that stage back then. And, and a bit like you know now people know what luxury lodges are. Yes, they didn't know what luxury lodges were, uh, especially in the US market. You know, lodge has sometimes has that sort of more that sort of high school camp type thing yeah. or national park sort of hut. So it's quite a different product to where, you know, where we're now positioned. But look, going back to your original question, because uh, I have gone off on a, on a little bit of a tangent. We um, like tangents, that's we, good. <laughs> yeah, we, um, I think we ultimately combined uh, two very interesting paths or journeys that we had in our 20s um and uh and early 30s for me um being a little bit older than Haley, and then uh put that to work creating uh what in many ways has divine sorry defined experiential travel here in australia and so you mentioned about the special ingredients that you said um you know 
as you just now define luxury experiential travel. So Bailey Lodges, what would you say are the you know, the blueprint or your special ingredients? That yeah, make up well, the it's, it's an interesting um, uh, little anecdote. Share a little anecdote first. Um, we um, will talk later. I know about um, uh, the new investors in our business, KSL yes. Capital, and when they started spending time with us. They, it's interesting when someone looks externally at your business and they come back and sort of tell you what you have and you've got to love it in the, uh, the, the American sort of summary was uh, it's our secret sauce. Oh, so, yes. yeah, so the, the secret <laughs> so you sauce. you became the secret sauce. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, the, yeah, that's the special ingredients. But no, look, what, are, what we've always said, um, you, you know, what, what has made us, what's made our, our business or A, special, but also yes. be successful because yes. a lot of travel businesses are. And, yeah. you know, they're um, especially in remote places um, with all of the added costs, et cetera. But for us, they always have been. And, you know, it's interesting when people ask you that question because you have to look in with them and go, okay, well, what do we actually do and why, do we, why are we different? And look, in our case, first and foremost was the site. It had, the location had to have the wow factor and has to have the wow factor. So we've always said, you know, it needs to be within or bordering a, you know, an incredible natural area, preferably yeah. at like World Heritage as a national park, but not necessarily, or uh, amazing cultural um, precinct, as you know, it could be that as well. Um, so a real sense of place is so important. Um, the other for us is that we're really interested in, in contemporary design. So our lodges have never been oldie worldy. Um, yes. They've always celebrated um, contemporary, but but not minimalist. So we've often talked about, you know, organic luxury or relaxed luxury. Yes. And that then segues into what does it feel like staying in one of our properties? And um, Yvonne, I know you've just been out yeah. of longitude and it'll be interesting Amazing. to sort of hear, you know, your feedback on that, but in terms of our ingredients and them coming, you know, them showing themselves. But for us, we define something called first name service and what we have tried to instill in our team is that people that come and stay are family and that you should try and learn people's names and they should be addressed by their first name and that basically the team there likewise are part of your family and the time they spend with you engaging and perhaps you, you know asking your story Equally, you'll spend time probably asking their story and have a shared genuine interest. And we found that incredibly successful in terms of breaking down those barriers and actually making for a, a very relaxed experience. It doesn't suit everyone. Um, yeah. There's obviously certain uptight travellers out there. Hopefully by the end of their stay, they've lost they those, become sort of, relaxed. those layers and they become relaxed. But nine times out of 10, it's a, uh, it's a fantastic way for people just to feel like they're at home or feel like they're you know they're staying with friends so that's, must, that's really important for us and I must say we really um discovered that everyone knew us you know from the moment we walked in um the doors it was lovely and it does it just does give you that feel, feeling of warmth and you know that people care which is yeah, fantastic yeah. Hopefully, hopefully they didn't know you because you um you gave the bar a huge nudge Oh, yes. Well, maybe they did that as well. Although they, they, knew, they knew me before I went to the bar. Well, so uh, a, a little, I'm, I'm going to come back to the secret sauce and the ingredients yes. still, but another yeah. little segue is something that we've noticed over uh, the whole COVID period or whatever we'd like to call that, where our properties have had significant domestic visitation instead of the typical um, international yeah. Um, visitation is uh, what's different in the properties over that time and the, the key difference is the uh, the open bars and how uh, how they get Aussies like significantly it. more used by domestic Australians than the international but, yeah uh, and actually um, going on from that then one of the the question you know on everyone's mind is pre-COVID what was your international to domestic split the ratio and Obviously, now it's only domestic, but um, yeah. what was the ratio? Well, it depends on the property, but something like yeah. Longitude 131, where you just were, was about 60-40, so 60% international. Oh, so you um, still had 40% domestic. Yeah, that, and that yeah. built up a lot in more recent times um, okay. as um, the destination of, you know, Uluru Katajuda has really enjoyed a renaissance and uh, 
but also we've had many people going to longitude domestic Australians that had been to um, you know the area before but we're really looking at it in a different way of going often with friends and experiencing you know a luxury lodge experience you know in the desert uh, yes. really a celebration of the outback sure they would go and do the attractions but a lot of the other ingredients that we define Bailey Lodges by, which is, you know, um, fantastic food and wine experiences, yes. um, uh, interpretive experiences as part of the product or part, you know, part of the rate or being being part of the, the package. So they've sort of come back, come back for that um, as opposed to sort of the, you know, perhaps the typical sort of, you know, Uluru experience. Yes. Um, but then other properties are different. So like uh, Capella Lodge on Lord Howe Island um, has historically sat at around, um, you know, about 80% domestic. Except domestic. Yeah, uh, I, I would have thought so, um, especially yeah. for the international market. They want to do the the main um, yeah. icon, iconic landmarks. Yeah, although, that, although Lord Howe has grown its international, international visitation significantly over the last sort of, you know, five years. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's come up to that. And... Um, quite big in the uh, Euro European winter. So yeah, February, February, March time is, is, is quite big, especially for your Europeans coming to Lord Howe. Yes. And, you know, it's always been hard to get in. Capella's like impossible to get our clients into. Um, so obviously, really, that just highlights the success of Bailey Lodges. Um, Longitude as well now is sold out for the season. So how do you see the Australian market, like especially um, longitude, what are the different differences that you see in, is it longer stays for the domestic market over the international or, you know, what are the, what do the domestic market want, you know, versus the international market? Well, um, look, domestic market has always stayed longer at any yeah. of the properties. That's just, that's just, that's just a fact. And, Something like um, Longitude 131 is an interesting example because we're getting a lot of four-night stays yeah, now yeah. Um, and where people actually, they relish the downtime. They want yeah. to spend time, you know, in their, you know, fantastic luxury tent or pavilion. They want to just go, want to go to the spa. They want to just soak it up. Yes. And, and, and uh, I have must a say... sleep in morning. You know, that's sort of not, a, not getting up and go having, feeling that they're missing out. You know, yes. that they can actually just enjoy it. And that's what I now will really highly recommend four nights because we did three nights and I would have yeah. liked that extra um, night just to exactly sleep in, you know, do a quiet walk and just have yeah. a bit of downtime. Or, I felt like or I just did. having like another night where you could just, you know, choose to go up and have, you know, June top drinks and, yes. you know, just, and just watch that. your own sunset, did that as well. So, yes, we did um, it all, James. <laughs> we, we've noticed, well, that's good, that's good. Um, we noticed the places like um, even back so with when Southern Ocean Lodge was open, the same, you know, domestic market would always be a longer stay um, than the internationals who are, you know, just time poor like we are when we travel overseas, unless we're going to more of a flop and drop destination. But if we're travelling around, you know, you're usually only spending two or three nights in one place. So, you know, it's very similar by, you know, by, by reverse um, yes. when internationals and, come here. And and tell me with the, exp um, the experiences, so you say that a key focus is experiential travel. So how do you implement it? I know I saw the signature experiences that were on offer at Longitude. So I haven't been to Capella yet, and unfortunately I can't get in. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then... I'm sure um, we can uh, find a little uh, spot there somewhere. Uh, no, I don't Sometimes. think so. No, no <laughs> I don't well, think so. You do, uh, well, people are chopping and changing in these crazy times. Yeah, I know. Sure. I know, yeah. and and actually, that that was another query. How do, are you handling the the last minute changes? Oh so, well, answering that question first. Yeah, um, yeah. What we generally find is, is as one border closes, another <laughs> another one seems yeah. to open. Yeah. Um, and so you can often sort of fill um, uh, last minute cancellations, and we you know run a very long sort of. Um, you know, cancellation is a wait list as well. And uh, interesting enough, Instagram tends to be um, a, a, mm -hmm. a platform that is quite effective these days in terms of just putting up last minute availability. Yes. Um, so that's quite useful. Actually, though, for something like uh, Longitude 131 at Uluru, um, they have had such a crazy busy last uh, four or five months that um, the, the, when you were there, it was probably a little bit quieter and it's... Uh, 
I think it's actually a little bit of a time for the the property to just regroup and yeah. uh, be able to um, spend some time uh, doing all those things that they haven't been able to haven't been able to do um, over that over that period. Going back to experience, yes, um, yes, all of the properties have different differing levels of of signature experiences. So something like, and I'll use uh, Southern Ocean Lodge as the flagship, and it will be the flagship again. That um, is like a little bit like longitude where there's a signature experiences program and it's delivered over a minimum of a two night stay. Um, so both um, longitude and to the notion lodge are set up in a, in a similar way. And then on top of that, you can add bespoke experiences um, to that or private experiences. So all of our signature experiences are delivered in small, um, you know, small groups. Small groups. Yeah. Um, Capella is the other end of the spectrum, actually, where we work with a whole range of local operators that are on actually resident on the island and add sort of real colour and culture to the destination. And, you know, many of them are multi-generation islanders. Wow. Um, they've inherited the business, you know, from their family, from their ancestors. And so the stories and the insights that come out through those colourful characters are gold and that sort of part of that Lord Howe experience. So it's not shiny and slick. Yes. It's, it's actually immersing in a destination and the people of that destination. I, and, and I love that. The experiences. And so, so that's interesting. Why do you not do the same um, at both, well, at Southern Ocean, you know, when it was running or is that something that you've got on in the pipeline for when you are reopening? Because I that immersion into that local culture and yeah. as you say generations of islanders that's just um key like well that. kangaroo island is really about in many ways the natural attraction so yes. you know our flinders chase and uh seal bay but we do do other specialist experiences okay. you know food and wine experiences yes. or art experiences which then you know really harness the the locals the because locals the reality well. is the locals within the uh um the uh the natural experiences are really is really the wildlife yes so that's the, so, you, so you're meeting the, the locals up yeah, close <laughs> yeah that's it the new um the new silky oaks when it opens yes. will be a little bit of a combination of both utilizing preferred external operators for you know that that sort of not sort of almost typical sort of reef rainforest experience but then more in-depth um indigenous experiences so being able to also go and uh, do incredible coastal walks with a local Indigenous guide, etc. But then there'll be some on-property experiences as well, whether that be morning yoga by the, you know, the cascading um, Mossman River or oh. otherwise just a, you know, a guided walk up the Fig Tree Rapids. So a little bit of a combination of both. But if you flick to, say, Canada, where yes. um, Bailey Dodgers has recently... Yes, um, I wanted to uh, ask you about that. Yeah, has recently... Um, um uh, taken on Claquot Wilderness Lodge that's um like signature experiences on steroids where yeah. uh basically there's about 20 different experiences most of them are included except say helicopters um and um pretty much are all private except for the one full day you know full day sort of marine experience where you go with a small group in a boat um that's so fantastic so yeah, they're so quite, all a, quite a different, quite a different experience. Yeah, I think it sounds like you'd need a week there, maybe. Five <laughs> days is great. So it uh, runs yeah. in uh, three, four, and, and seven day programs um, over there, and uh, something that Hayley and I were lucky enough to experience, um, uh, well, almost two years ago now, and uh, to go and uh, go and immerse over there. And I did immerse. I did swim in some freezing cold mountain mountain wow. uh, water. And how alive did you feel? Very, very, <laughs> very, very. But and, uh, yeah, that's an interesting, an interesting spot, that one. And tell me, just then moving on from that, because Bailey Lodges was what three properties in Australia, then yeah. now four. Um, how did you get into the international market? And yeah, well, actually, just, actually five now in Australia because um, there's also yes, the yes, I know that's Rockets, yeah another so, new uh, one. Yeah. Uh, so, look, the, the journey has really came about that um, started a few years ago. We had a number of uh, interested parties knocking on our door, wanting to uh, invest or buy, buy us, invest in us or buy us. And I think that was a little bit defining in that 
if we cast our mind back to when we were developing Southern Ocean Lodge, most people thought that we were absolutely kooky, that we had no idea what we were doing. And um, um, well, how wrong were they? Yeah, how wrong were they? <laughs> and uh, you know, and and I, you know, used to have a little figure to myself when you know typical uh, hoteliers, you know, at these hotel conferences or whatever would go, "How many rooms have you got?" And it was just like, "Oh, well, you know, 21." And they'd sort of go, they'd almost just sort of look past you as if, you know, how you irrelevant mad? to you, are you mad? Yeah. <laughs> and they really don't understand that it's a combination of rooms, rate and occupancy, you know, that make that make it uh, that make it what it is and make it a successful business. And in fact, I've always been a advocate that less is more in our yes. in our market. Um, that the smaller the property, the more special. And yes. uh, and people will pay for that and pay for that, you know, exclusivity. But in terms of how we got into that international market, well, it's really through one of those suitors that um, came along, whether or not they wore us down or, or what. But ultimately, uh, Hattie and I um, sold a significant part of the business to a uh, US company called KSL, KSL Capital. Yes. And uh, they are a private equity group that only invest in hotels and tourism. Um, so mm. they're a specialist in that, based in the US, but um, have investments throughout the UK, Europe, and Asia. Um, and they're really the ones that are taking our secret source forward um, with uh, a lot more capital and also um, all of our existing teams. So you know what's fantastic to see is you know the the staff you know Clairquot has opened in Canada with. You know, uh, one of our assistant managers from um, Longitude. Our yeah, Southern I saw. Ocean Lodge. And Southern Ocean um, Lodge. Yeah, I saw that. So, which is which is just so incredible uh, to see um, that the the formula is, uh, yeah. is spreading in that in that regard. Um, so they're the real. I think they're, they're the, the big advocates of expansion. Um, yes. And. Uh, you know, Hayley and I are sort of charged with the, as founders and creative directors in terms of guarding our secret source. Okay. Um, so we're the custodians of, of the brand okay. and custodians of the product um, and work still very closely on any uh, project. So at the moment, we're very busy on the um, d development of Silky Oaks Lodge. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. it, looks, yeah. it looks sensational, stunning. So, yeah, so, we think it will be so, and so, uh, come later this year. So, yes. Uh, and when yeah. is it? Is it opening October? There was um, something on the first of November. Okay, place. first so, of November. Uh, so just uh, been a very uh, been a very wet winter up in uh, far north Queensland. Yeah. And, well, hopefully uh, it will be a dry summer. Hopefully, yeah, yes. and a good opportunity for domestic Australians to do something uh, something quite different. Different, um, yeah, as well. And, and then, of course, another interesting um, anecdote and segue is into um, Hooker Lodge in New Zealand. Yes, I know. Um, so that joined the joined the Bay Lodges family um, about six months ago, and uh, what's interesting there is, I mean, we really now inherited what is the grandfather of luxury lodges, well, really in the world. And um, that, that's what I wanted to ask you because, like, that's been the benchmark in the South Pacific, really, for yeah. really the top lodge. So, how does Bailey Lodges lift that even, like? What can you put to it? You know, well, what do you that's see? That's an interesting one in terms of um, having, you know, great respect for the the genes of hooker and, yeah. uh, and the history of hooker um, and how how do we take that forward? And, and yeah. I think that's a case of, and I would say that's in a highly considered way. And I believe that hooker is, is ready for... Um, uh, some new reincarnation, certainly yeah. just to bring it a little bit more contemporary. And I'm probably going to get some hate mail by saying this, but um, but a little bit less stuffy. Ah, um, and, I, won't, I won't send it off to Hooker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I think, and they, uh, I mean, Kerry, the GM there, is yeah. a fantastic guy and he has a great team. And look, I think they're really excited so, about, yeah. new, uh, about, you know, new beginnings and changes yeah. as well. Um, but that's in no way to say that, you know, Hooker isn't a classic because Hooker is, a, is the yeah. classic luxury lodge. And just winding back the clock, in, um, in 2005, mm -hmm. Hayley and I, when we were in the pre-development stages of Southern Ocean Lodge, which opened in March 2008, we went on a trip uh, 
Hayley was pregnant and we left two of our boys at home with my, my parents at that point. Uh, and we went on a recce trip uh, to, and it was a lightning one or two night stay in five of the New Zealand luxury lodges. Oh, wow. Just to, we thought, well, we've got to go and see what everyone else is doing. Yeah. And what we came away with were from the, was quite a few really great details. Mm. Um, but it really formed the, the, the very DNA of what we did with Southern Ocean Lodge. And, and it concurrently let us sort of develop and fine tune the Capella Lodge product at the same thing and same time. So we made a conscious decision that we weren't going to do oldie worldie. Yes. Um, of which many of the New Zealand lodges yeah. are. Yeah. We were going to be true to Australia. In other words, we weren't, we weren't going to have sort of US or European in, inspiration like, you know, hunting oh. or yes. you know, that, yeah. that to us, that, that wasn't. To us, it, we were going to be a celebration of Australia. Love and it. And that's where the whole casual luxury came from and the, and the lack of formality. So I think at the time I was a lot younger then but I really disliked being called Mr. Bailey. Uh -huh. um, and I always thought, well, that was my father. The last thing I want to be turned out was called Mr. Bailey by yeah, someone. Yeah, I love that. Um, no. And that's where we came up with, well, no, I'm James. Yeah. Um, and so are you. You're Yvonne. Yeah. Um, and uh, we have had an interesting, um, uh, just on that first name service, we had an interesting uh, situation when um, uh, Will and, uh, um, you know, uh, Prince... Uh, William came to um, uh, to Longitude when it was sort of uh, five years ago, and uh, we were all the protocol people were in touch with the then general manager and you know what, how he was to address them and do this and do that and, and Adrian the GM said oh no no we we only call people by their first names and the, you know there's the silence on the end of the phone oh no you can't do that and <laughs> you know, it's just not 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 on and so the story goes he gets out of the vehicle at the you know, the arrival tent yes. and you know, Adrian's there and, you know, ready to do his curtsy or whatever he's meant to do. And uh, Will comes uh, comes over and says, uh, you know, g'day, mate, I'm Will. Oh, uh, brilliant. Because he'd obviously heard of it all and thought he was just going to uh, jump in and uh, jump in and, you know, uh, uh, circumvent How straight away. Yeah, so that was a, that's a nice story. Yeah, uh, gorgeous. So um, in regards to Hooker then, is what like your involvement Haley and you with all of the lodges actually now now that uh you've well is it relinquished you know some of your shares to KSL Capital what is your um involvement moving forward day to day then is it the development so day, to, day to day it? it's really um as founders so we're the face of the business yeah um we look after the um uh, very much sort of custodians of the product um yes. So things like that all-inclusive nature or highly inclusive nature. Um, the spirit of generosity is another one of our parts of our secret sauce that we've always, you know, fought, or not fought for, but um, we've been really passionate about and I yes. would fight for it if someone wanted to change it, which is basically for us, you know, the more you can include, the better um, because yeah. people just feel that much more relaxed and they also leave feeling that they've got value for money as opposed to sort of being nickeled and dimed along the way. Yes. Uh, and we've, you know, both of us, we've all stayed in places like that where, you know, you've paid, you know, many thousands of dollars for a room and uh, then they might even try and charge you for breakfast. Yes, uh, yeah. You know, exactly. Especially some places in uh, this time of year in uh, Italy. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, crazy. You know, we, we, we tell stories about the uh, the kids' um you know, hundred dollar spaghetti bolognese. You know, in uh, in the some Italian hotel a couple of years ago. Oh, beautiful! A huge yeah, bill by the end of it. Yeah, especially yeah. You, you've got four boys. Is that correct? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, four yeah. boys. So, so look, really, our involvement is um is the, is is the guarding the DNA, but also the projects so are moving forward. So, Hooker would be moving forward now, looking at okay, so how is that product going to evolve? Yeah. Um, yeah. And how can we make an iconic product, you know, better? How can it better suit the times moving forward? Um, and so what the, are you going to do? Well, still still in the planning stage. Yeah. Um, but to us, somewhere like Hooker could do with a little bit of an injection of, of modernity, so yeah. a little bit more okay. contemporary, perhaps some out with the tartan and in with some amazing New Zealand fabric designers. Um, Beautiful. You know, yep. 
you know, we can move on from the perhaps the hunting heritage that yeah. did have that really had nothing to do with New Zealand anyway. And let's bring in some of the incredible sort of Maori, Maori culture. artists and culture. Yeah. Um, that to us is really important, you know, that sense of place. Yes. Um, the other is physically with, with something like Hooker, we've always sort of places that are like just having a great room and that great room is somewhere where guests can really come together and it might be a fabulous day, it might be a rainy day, but it's a place where people can just come together at any time of the day or night. Yes. Um, and so it's like, you know, the convivial lounge room. Yeah. Um, well, Hooker doesn't have that the same, in the same way because it's quite, um, uh, as the property grew, the central lodge didn't. Um, so by default, it has these amazing dining nooks because there's nowhere to seat everyone. So they've yes. done this incredible sort of pivot and where I hate that word pivot, but uh, yes. everyone uses it especially now. now. But, like especially now. but they can, um, you know, dine in all these different places. Well, the reality is that's because there actually isn't enough space for everyone to dine together. Yeah. Um, so that's great. We would never want to take that away, but the lodge itself we see as if it can grow and have more space and feel that people can come and enjoy that, you know, incredible view out to the river um, and relax because we'd like people to spend more time there not just yes. you know use it as a place for dinner and you know pre-dinner drinks so that's important and you know today obligatory is that everyone there's a spa um, you know a spa and a gym and yes. all that and we'd like to put that in place as well actually um, I'd love a gym at Longitude by the way ah we need said to go and pound some of those sand dunes well, we did that as well, but okay. um, yeah, interesting. Well, the new, the new Southern Ocean Lodge will have a gym. Gym. So, and, uh, yeah. and actually, you, you mentioned about dining together. That was something that really stood out um, with me at Longitude. It was really lovely because especially with the shared signature experiences that you do with um, mm. other guests, it was so nice to come back. We actually had really lovely conversations with a number of guess you know you, you do feel like you get to know them after and it brought yeah. me back actually we were saying that it was as close to a safari experience an African safari experience that we can remember and I don't know whether that was had you know if you had any in you know when you were designing your model or your one of your uh, essential ingredients you know I know you've travelled a lot, both you and Hayley, you know, over the years, mm. passionate travellers. Is that something that, you know, Africa have you brought back? Oh, definitely. And look, um, hats off to Longitude. There's a real vision originally of um, an industry legend, Grant Hunt, um, back in Voyager's days. And so the original Longitude was his yes. his, his brainchild. And uh, certainly it was modelled on a, a Australian version of an African safari lodge. And it felt um, like it. And had a, but interesting story in 2013 when we were working towards taking over Longitude for the, uh, so Bailey Lodges has a 30 year, um, uh, you know, commitment to lease. that yeah. to that property lease. And um, um, I took a trip actually with two of my kids and we travelled to Londolozi to four mm. of the Singita properties and uh, Divine. it was just <laughs> incredible. And uh, yes, the premise of that was very much to let's, for me to see what Africa is doing. Um, and, uh, you know, suffice to say that that was, you know, it was fantastic to see that. And uh, so, yes, there's lots of, uh, lots of great, uh, lots of great experiences there that we've not, not modeled on Africa, but we've certainly sort of thought, okay, well, how do they do it? And how can we do it in our own Australian way? And look, a couple, you know, we talk about experiential travel and, the experiences that you were offering at Longitude that I saw, just a few of the little hidden ones like the swag. Well, um, shouldn't yeah. shout out too much about it or it won't be, you know, special or, well, it's always special. But who comes up with them? Like who, is that you and Hayley as yeah, well? Yeah, that's, um, that's very much Hayley and I um, and, uh, you know, supported by a great team. Um, in fact, the swag specifically... Um, yeah was my idea, but a typical swag, Australian bush swag, has a mattress built into it. Um, so actually we have a wonderful lady, um, one of our operations team, Sarah, in our office, and she was an avid camper and had her own swag. And so we worked on that together. And uh, in fact, there's photos of me tucked up in various prototypes on the office floor. 
Um, just like Brilliant. there was back when we were doing the Bailey Bed, all the various you know trips to Australian manufacturer AH Beard. So we're very passionate about the products, but yeah, the swag was a uh, is something that we had to develop. So the the outdoor day bed, the fireplace, and then of course, what do you need with that swag? Well, I'm not going to relieve. I'm not going to. Um, uh, 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 so spoil the surprise of what you no, get that night. I liked it. How it all unfolds. <laughs> But um, yeah, we through us. It's all you have all the essentials that one might need for a uh, outdoor uh, outdoor swag experience. Yeah, it was fantastic. And are you going to do those little surprises? And uh, you know, Southern Ocean Lodge when that reopens, are you go throwing the like? Do you have a swag there or? No, a bit of a, a different, different product. To us, you know, that's an outback experience, and Southern Ocean yes. Lodge is, a, is an outback. But, yes. uh, but you know, all the, you know, the, the Southern Ocean Lodge, the original Southern Ocean Lodge, had an incredible amount of special detail, and and yeah, uh, so um, so sad. Everyone was so devastated. Yeah, and we yeah. hope to. Uh, well, the, the you know the new the new Soul Soul Two, as we call it. Yeah, um, Soul hoping Two. To, hoping to open that uh, by mid twenty three. Yes. Um, and it should uh, start construction in um, early, early next year. And tell me, uh, so is well it... into the planning stages now. And are you going to, because I, I know it, you know, being your flagship and everyone raved, I hadn't seen it personally, but everyone raves about it. Um, how are you, are you going to basically construct it the same on the same model or are you making changes? Yeah, so it's like a, it really honours its original design. Uh, um, and I think when we were 10 years old, we had a little saying that Southern Ocean Lodge was 10 and timeless. Uh, um, and um, the, so for us, there's so much about of it that should be the same. And I think that will be so amazing to walk into something and people think, oh my God, this is exactly as okay. it was. That said, we're taking the opportunity to update the designs of most of the um, all the suites, uh, the slightly reorientated to take into account the views, um, just some new materials, and upgrading the experience. So every room will have a fireplace, every room will have a bar. Um, oh, beautiful! And there'll also be a new owner's cottage type experience called the Ocean Pavilion, which will be both um, two, three, or four bedroom. Oh wow! Um, Fantastic! So, yeah, so that's uh, that's really that's uh, so, so some exciting things on that in the uh, in the future because that's actually um one of the questions you know you've got four boys and kids and taking you know so many clients want to take their families and travel with their families how do you look at bailey lodges do you think that you know family friendly like for example one june pavilion you know the two bedroom how do you cater for families across the Bailey Lodges? Portfolio? Well, look, as a general rule for us, we see our products as have a, having a level of sophistication and that as yes. a general rule, that's best enjoyed with children 10 years and over. Yes. That's our overarching policy. Yes. Um, we used to be six um, yes. and, uh, and we found that was just a little bit too young um, and uh, for the more rarefied sort of aspects um, yes. of, the, of the property. Um, the differences are um, that, and it is sites property specific to an extent. New Zealand and Hooker is a little bit under review as to what the future may hold yes. uh, for that product because that currently does take kids of all ages. Yes, uh, no, I noticed that. Uh, Clayoquot, though, in uh, Canada is quite different because we see that very much as a family. family yeah. And they're at six years and above. Um, so that may be where we end up going with Hooker as well, but not sure. But certainly 10 and above is here to stay with our mainline properties. Yes. And, uh, and uh, certainly those that involve, uh, a, you know, signature experiences where you were travelling with other guests and, um, and included dining and all of those experiences. But in Canada, it's different. It very much celebrates the active... The active yes. Um, and, and the three gen... You know, that's just huge at the moment, doing a lot of three-gen Yeah, well, we do a lot of that at, um, say, Capella Lodge. We uh, yes. have quite a few buyouts where they take the whole property because, uh, you know, 20 guests, it's the perfect size. Yes. In uh, fact, as... that's where, um, that's where Hayley and my, our family, uh, we're all going with Hayley's parents and her sister and family, we're going to Capella at Christmas. Oh, so you could get in, Touch could you? Wood. 
Well, we could because, because uh, you're interested in this a uh, international booking that we'd had from two years ago um, that then moved to this year. That it's an international family from all over the world wow, and, and they uh, can't come. So they cancelled and there's five nights and we thought, mm, what we do probably won't have this opportunity again. So you we took it. Oh, beautiful. Do you have a spare room? Ah, unlikely. <laughs> yeah. um, so now, we'll get you in we'll get you in there sometime yeah yeah, yeah. okay no Fantastic. i'm happy for you it's fabulous that it's you know always sold out so it's great yeah. really yeah. obviously a, a credit to what you guys are doing oh thank you but anyway there's lots of uh people shouldn't give up there's lots no, of opportunities I'm there sure. is there so. is now, also, so, well, I, wonderful to talk to you if can i, I just ask you one one quick yeah. question so you saw i sent you our um, you know, deck of cards. Yep. So this was the why travel experience, you know, uh, like you about experiences yes. likewise. So I just wanted to ask you what did, what resonated with you? Like the, the avid traveler that well, you I, I love, I love the, I love the cards and you have to show me again, but the one that is my favorite is the one that's the surprise, the unexpected yeah. of the why factors. I think it's so, the unexpected. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the unexpected. Because for me, and this is a great way to finish up. Yes. I've always talked to my team about it's not about a certain standard. It's about exceeding someone's expectations. And that doesn't mean that you're offering um James, sorry, that's my cool. um, my right then my um I that's why I said oh no, I was just saying oh thanks because my uh, laptop is <laughs> going flat. Oh no! <laughs> so so right, oh yeah, right this is it, it is quite clear. It's um clearer like that. But anyway, so yeah, tell me. Yeah, why. I was going to say I, I I think the phone the iPhone camera is so fantastic. Yeah, yeah, much yeah. better. It's it's that's interesting. Why, that's yeah. why I tend. That's why I normally would tend to use it. Okay. Uh, well, we're, the most important question of all then, relating back to why travel and our connection, yeah. you're saying because you got cut off. So you like the um, the unexpected. Yeah, so the that's... unexpected. And I was just saying, look, I, I with my team, I've always said it's, it's basically exceeding people's expectations. And, you know, what that means, it might not be, you know, it's not like in a typical, you know, you know, mainstream hotel providing like perfect silver service, for example, you know, it's far from it. Yeah. Um, it's about exceeding their expectations in terms of that, you know, spirit of generosity, that incredible engagement with the staff, that amazing location of the property, the great design, the attention to detail and all those unexpected little traits or traits that come along. Yeah. So there's an element of theatre to it. Um, but certainly when I travel, it's to me, it's, it's those surprises or having my expectations exceeded yes. uh, in terms of how I feel. And it's a very personal, it's a very personal experience, per personal feeling, but, but that's it for me. It's the unexpected. Yeah. And I love that because that's also um, my my top one. So, James, thank you so much for your time. Thanks I really thank appreciate it because I know you're a busy guy. So thanks a lot. All good. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, we'll see you soon. And we promise we'll get you into Capella. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> and then and the new um, and the new Southern Ocean Lodge. Just oh, have to wait yeah. for it to be re have to wait for it to be rebuilt. And Silky Oaks. All right. And, and then okay. Claire Quat. <laughs> We'll, okay, we'll keep in touch. Yeah, thanks a lot, James. All right. Cheers. See you. Bye. Bye.